the last two years, such that today the prices of essential commodities, that is foodstuffs, basic foodstuffs and fuel, have stabilized, especially in the past one year. Inflation has come down from a high of 9.7% in 2022 to now 2.7%, 2 which is the lowest in seven Good morning, please be seated. And thank you very much for coming early. Um, mine is uh, going to be very brief. And I hope all the other presenters will also be brief. Uh, and uh, by doing so, I'll cut down on uh, protocols and preliminaries. I appreciate all the dignitaries present and what you do in the service of our country at national government level, county government level, independent offices and uh, commissions. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to this uh, uh, ordinary session of um, IBEC, the 24th. Uh, <coughs> it's the first one that uh, I am chairing with my new responsibility. And I look forward to working with you, each one of you, to progress the agenda of the revolution and uh, protect our constitution and the ideals on which our constitution is founded. I look forward to a collegial, consultative, and cooperative um, engagement, not just for this uh, meeting, but uh, for all our other, other, other engage engagements because um, <coughs> Article 6 of our Constitution and all the enabling laws of devolution do not anticipate adversarial engagements. The Constitution says that all our deliberations and uh, engagements must be done in the spirit of consultations, mutual respect and cooperation. And I think that should uh, really, really inform uh, us uh, as we go forward. I also want to congratulate uh, the new uh, leadership of the Council of Governors, uh, Chairperson, uh, the Honorable Abdullahi, Governor Wajia, Pongezi, Governor, Chair, and I wish you well, Vice Chair Mutai Kahiga, Governor of Jerry County, congratulations, and all the chairpersons of, uh, oh, there is a whip, but this is a renewal of mandate. There have been a whip for, for how many terms now? Two. There are no term limits. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pongezi, <laughs> Governor Sang, my friend, uh, a whip, and all the chairpersons of the various committees of the Council of Governors. I look forward to work with you, each one of you, again, to further the interests of our country and our counties. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, um, the constitution of Kenya has very high expectations on devolution. Very high expectations that uh, devolution will bring more responsible and accountable governance at the, at the local level, at the grassroots the decision making and identification of priorities will be more um, consequential to the people because it's being done at the local level and more cohesive communities will be formed at that level because governance is uh, being propelled from the local level. The Constitution also creates very high expectations on the issue of allocation of uh, resources equitably to ensure our country develops equitably. And um, much has been achieved since 2013, <coughs> since actually 2010, but particularly under the auspices of IBEC, much has been achieved since 2013. And um, I'm also happy to note that some progress have been made 
towards um, implementation of the uh, resolutions of the immediate uh, ordinary session of IBEC. The country is operating under a challenging macroeconomic situation and that has affected the economic uh, performance for the country for of the country for some time now as you're aware the closure of our economy for nearly two years between 2020 and 2021 because of COVID-19 and other global events including high interest rates in the global market the war in Ukraine and a few other things really affected the economy of Kenya in a significant manner meaning the post-COVID-19 period starting 2021-2022 uh, saw a number of things happening that have hurt our economy and our ability therefore to generate resources to service the two levels of government. High interest rates, a weak shilling and an unstable foreign exchange regime, high inflation, high prices of essential commodities including foodstuffs and fuel. And this really affected many countries in the world, Kenya included. Over the last two years, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has done all it could, and I'm happy to report, a lot of progress has been made in the last two years, such that today the prices of essential commodities that is foodstuffs, basic foodstuffs and fuel have stabilized, especially in the past one year. Inflation has come down from a high of 9.7% in 2022 to now 2.7%, 2, 2 which is the lowest in 17 years. The exchange rate of the dollar it's now stable from a high of 165, 168 per dollar to a stable 127, 129 range for the past one year almost. Interest rates have come down. They are decreasing from a high of 15.65% one year ago. They had even reached 16% at some point. Today, the central bank rate is at an all-time low of 11.25 percent and there is indication that the interest rates will continue dropping so we have a, a macroeconomic situation that promises a brighter future and i can confirm without fear of contradiction that the worst is behind us the country can only now move forwards. We can only move upwards. And um, thank you for your patience, because in the process, some of the commitments around devolution, like disbursement of uh, monies to counties and, 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 and other obligations, have been affected by this macroeconomic turbulence. The pain has also been felt at household levels. And uh, the devolved units being the centers of service delivery and the centers of contact with citizens, you can bear me witness that the pain has been quite uh, significant, but I stand here today with the good news that the worst is behind us and the future is going to be more comfortable because after arresting the escalation of the macroeconomic indicators right now, the commitment of this administration is to work on household incomes, empowerment of citizens, strengthening devolution and service delivery at grassroots level, making sure that we create more jobs and therefore open the economy uh, for a better and more inclusive uh, uh, prosperity. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
the last one year uh, had uh, some political uh, implications which affected our fiscal uh, situation and that is in the sense that some financial instruments uh, or uh, uh, fiscal instruments really that um, we anticipated will be passed were not passed because of uh, violent and riotous behavior that uh, caused death and violence in the middle of this year leading to the withdrawal of the Finance Act 2024 and that has had uh, its effect again on our fiscal uh, uh, resources uh, for this year. We've had to adjust um, both the Division of Revenue, amend the Division of Revenue Act, the County Allocation of Revenue Act and the consequential legislations I'm sure will also have to all be aligned including budgets uh, and appropriations uh, frameworks to make sure that uh, this reality, that is the collapse of the 2024 Finance Act, is um, Finance Bill, is accommodated. I want to appreciate the mediating, the mediation teams uh, and all the role players who enabled uh, a resolution of how to accommodate the shortfall. Um, initially, the shortfall was proposed to be 20 billion, but I think. Um, uh, that was uh, added, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, an additional 7 billion was added to bring the total to 387 billion, uh, which, which again now is uh, what we are working under. Thank you very much once more for the patience uh, during this uh, process. We encourage uh, more understanding, collaboration, and consensus building as opposed to confrontational approaches to sensitive issues like devolution. Uh, uh, I, I want to commend the, the, the spirit so far. Uh, we have had an issue of timely disbursements of, uh, of uh, county resources. I am informed by the CS for the National Treasury. Some progress has been made. I'm told November is still outstanding and I I am also told that next week, November, will be sorted out so that we, we try and regularize the delays. I am also aware there are other issues uh, involving um, access to the development funds. Other than the delay in disbursements, there is also further delay uh, down the chain uh, because of the accountability uh, procedures involving the Office of the Controller of Budget uh, and, and the spending by counties. That discussion, we must face it head on and resolve it. We cannot have a situation where uh, counties and county governments receive money, they are unable to spend it. But on the other hand, we must insist that accountability is for all of us. And therefore, we must have a, a way of bridging the gap between the viewpoints by the Council of Governors and the Controller of Budget to make sure that we assist both institutions, the COB and the COG, to deliver on their mandate. No institution has a right to frustrate the other. Both are pursuing legitimate uh, interests, national interests, but at the same time, we must not use uh, our mandates uh, either to frustrate or to delay the delivery of services to the people of Kenya. Having said that, I think it's my very big pleasure to be here this morning. I hope we'll have very good deliberations. I hope um, we will crystallize some of the issues that needs to be escalated to the summit, the Intergovernmental Relations Summit, which will be held on Monday. And, uh, and uh, so my plea, as I finish my remarks, is we keep the presentations brief and focused and succinct. Uh, and please, let's, let's just, uh, we can achieve a lot in the next one and a half hours so that we can also uh, release each other for other engagements which are equally competing. And all of us are busy people, whatever we are doing. I wish you well. I look forward to working with you. And um, I, am, I, I am in familiar territory because uh, 10 years of my public life I, I spent in uh, the devolution family. So I'm, I'm happy to be back home. 
the security people had stolen uh, me for a while, for two years. It was also a very good experience, uh, but I'm happy to be, to be back to the devolution family in one of the many roles that now I am undertaking. Thank you very much, and I wish you well. And uh, uh, what is the next item? I resume my exposition, and then maybe you will tell us what the next item is, and then we run through the agenda. Thank you very much.